All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday at 5 on August 28th. September's about to start, and all of the stuff that we were dealing with in March and April and May is about to come back in some new form, right? Uh, we get together every Friday to explore what's happening with technology and teaching, especially in this era where we teach a lot online. Uh, we look at online tools, and so most of our Fridays at 5 are connected to teaching with tech. Uh, but our fourth Fridays uh, are dedicated to a new series called Ask the Linguist. And we, we happen to have the key linguist in the room, which is Dr. Robin Barr. Welcome, Dr. Barr. Okay, we're gonna have you turn up your microphone or change it because we cannot hear you. Just letting you know, and we're gonna let Liz in the room. So I'm Karen Taylor, um, a, a co-author of the Color Vowel Chart with my co-author here today, Shirley. Hi, great to have you. Yeah, and uh, we do have, you know, we record this session and we often have new people in the room. So we like to just take a moment and warm up a little bit with the chart. Also because Robin will be referring to the chart, I think pretty often. So why don't we have some- oh, How's my volume now? It's sounding great, Robin. Okay then, I, I made it stop being automatic. It's now under my control. So All right. So, Dr. Barr, we're going to use your vast word knowledge, and we're going to have you throw uh, words that we might not know out to us, and we're going to decide what color they are. Okay? Oh, my, fav my favorite word is yex. All right, great. Y-E-X. Yex. <laughs> yex. Can you uh, guess what, what color is yex? And so let's go find the chat, and uh, do find the chat. This is going to be a great way for us to have the parallel dialogue, and go ahead and type in what color Zex? Is that what it is? What is Yex. it? Yex. yex. <laughs> I can't remember it because I don't know it. So the word is yex and we know. Yeah. Yex is a red pepper red word. Pepper, yex. And if you're you brand know what new it to the chart, try it. Can you model it for us, Robin? Red pepper yex. Great. So we can hear the e eh sound in red and pepper and yex, a word we do not yex know, uh, but we will. Okay. It, it, it means to hiccup. Okay. <laughs> All yes. the time. Yes. Yes. Like that. I think it's poetic. I think it is. The second I did it, I felt it was. Uh, onomatopoetic. What color is onomatopoetic? <laughs> onomatopoetic. So we're trying to sensitize ourselves to where is the stress, the longest, loudest syllable. <laughs> onomatopoetic would also be a red pepper word. You're right. Okay. Another long word from Robin. Oh. I've got a short one. How about uh, Zax? Oh, come on. These ones. <laughs> Zax. These are words, good. I, words, words that people didn't know. Zax. True. Zax. What color? Zax. Zax. My son's favorite story, right? Black cat yeah. Zax. 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 Great. It's, a, it's an old word for um, a sword, short for Scramazax. All right. All right. <laughs> Are all your else? words going to end with X today, Robin? Oh, well, that, that was my goal, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have one. Phoenix. What color is Phoenix? Phoenix. 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 That's a hard one to spell, Phoenix. too. Phoenix. So that's what's so neat about it, is that we can ignore how it's spelled or, not, or stop worrying about whether we know how to spell it. Phi is the same sound in green and T, so we'll Phoenix. call that a green Phoenix. word. That simple, Phoenix. right? Phoenix. Green, T. Phoenix. Let's see the beautiful hands. Ready? Green, T, Phoenix. Phoenix. And so if we can do that, if we can organize a word by its stress syllable, we now have a handle on how that word sounds in a way that doesn't require literacy and doesn't require the distraction of high literacy. If you have, you know, if you're somebody who has high literacy or if you're working with a highly literate student. Here's uh, one. So, mm -hmm. uh, pneumococca microscopic ultra Silicovocatoconiosis. Good. I heard the osis part. So, what color is that? <laughs> rose. Rose boat. Osis, exactly. Yeah. Osis. <laughs> so we have the rose boat. Osis. It's the longest rose word boat. in Webster's third, and it was the model for supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Oh, nice, nice. All right. And one more, maybe somewhere in the middle range, Robin. You never. Oh, Elimocinary. What? Elimocinary. Okay, good. Word I don't know. Elimocinary. 
Il est masonary. Il est ma. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, oh. If we had difficulty finding the stress, it really off. It's really hard to throw Il your hand masonary. on the first syllable. Masonary. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Olive sock. Olive sock. That oh. means charitable, and it is the um, word from which we get the word alms, as in to give alms to somebody. Oh, no. Al alms. Yeah. You can see the L. <laughs> you can see the M and you can see the S. Yeah, so. do, do people not other people not pronounce the L like I do? Alms. I don't say the L. Oh, I always. I, I don't. I've never said that word for any purpose. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> to give alms. Alms for the poor. Alms to the poor. All righty. So now we'll kind of start in on our topic here. This is the linguist is in. Um, so recently, I would say thanks. And you know, Liz Bigler right here in the room. Yay, Liz heralded the beginning of this discussion. And I would say also, and it's no coincidence, Doug, Doug is here and he also raised this quite a while ago. Um, words that when I say, oh, this word is one color, and then they say, that doesn't sound like that color to me. Um, and the example from, from uh, Liz was the two words, tan and man. So let's all just try those for a minute. Tan. What color tan, is tan? Tan. Tan, uh, tan, uh, uh, uh. tan. And so I just think, well, of course, you know, black cat tan. Okay. And then man. Everybody try man. 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 Uh, 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 uh. And I say that's black. And so about two years ago, Liz raised this question. She said, no, those, those don't sound black to me. And that dialogue has been, it's like a relay race. The baton gets picked up by some new person about every six months with a new person in our basics class where we build phonological awareness. Oh, do you do, you do that? Does, does somebody bring it up every time? Almost. You know, we Absolutely. don't pay them to do it, but it happens anyway. <laughs> and so there we That's have wild. it. We have another person, as we did this whole round, saying, no, 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 no. Those are not black words. And they're not any other color. Karen, you're missing a color. <laughs> so uh, so maybe first, before you start in, how many of you have that sensation that tan and man are not black words? Raise your hand if you'd feel like the way you're hearing them, that they're not. Come um, on, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on. All right. So so Angela, have, are you just, trying to be, are you just being cooperative? Or Angela, is that true for you? <laughs> You're being cooperative, aren't you? Okay. So no, no, no. Really, no. no, I actually I do see do hear it differently. I, I think it's and 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 ah, like ah, black and and, you know, I'm saying. Yeah, so you, you have that a little bit. Yeah, so so it's it sounds a little different in that yeah. context. I have a question for those of you who do have the tan man <laughs> sound. Uh, I just put two more words in the um in the chat. And I'm not going to pronounce them because I'm going to influence you. But uh, tell me if those have the same vowel as tan man or the same vowel as black cat. What do you think, Liz? Okay, so these words are bad and naturally. So the first word is, you, you want to know if, is bad black? Or is that what you're asking us? Yes, I was not going to pronounce it because I thought that might be uh, untoward influence. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, so bad I and think black. we all say these words all the time and don't notice in the other what the other is perceiving, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we're hurting anybody, but let's just so, see. Uh, so is bad black cat or tan man? Oh, we, this is not an easy question. Let's give a system. Yeah. Um, hold up one finger. One if, finger. If, if the word um, bad is black and hold up a fist if it's not. <laughs> Hold up a finger if bad has the same sound as black and cat. Anybody here from Philadelphia? So Jennifer, you don't- what's your story? You a fist because it's not? Okay, it's a one. Okay, so we all in the room feel like bad uh, and black match. Okay, because um, bad is yeah. one of the words that also does the tan man thing in some cities. So Philadelphia and New York in particular. So, okay, so yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? yeah. My my British parents saved me from that fate. Ah, okay. <laughs> and how about naturally? Is naturally black naturally. cat or is it a uh, tan man? Naturally, na 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 naturally 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 <laughs> naturally. The tan man is only 
words that, that have an N or an M. Well, that, that was what I was checking. So in your dialect, it's only before nasal? Uh, audio, Robin. We can't hear you. Oh, dang it. Four nasals? No, only two. N and M, I think. Be I'm sorry. I said I meant before nasals. Oh, yeah. Before. Only the stress yes. syllable yes. came out. It okay, came so out let me four. translate for a minute because this is my job. Robin's... <laughs> Robin's here to throw things at us. I'm going to translate that for some people, the, the black cat is a vowel category of ours, but there are some black words that don't feel black and they leave you wondering what they are. Um, now, in the case of um, a word like can, yes, I can, um, can, I can say, I, yes, I can. Um, but other people like in Albuquerque, they say, yes, I can, I can. And they simply raise it to red. Is this all part of the same thing, Robin? The can, yes and no. Can and can. Yes, and, yes no. and no. Talk that's, to us. That's that's the linguist's answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my students hate it when I do that. Um, let me. Can I share some? Can I share my vowel chart with you? Sure. Okay. Let me share the screen. Because look what I've got here. It's very cool. Okay. Can you all see this? Um, this is the Northern City's vowel shift, it's called. Uh, and which and, cities with those, what are we talking uh, about? Uh, Just so uh, the Northern City's vowel shift or the Inland City's vowel shift is um, centered right around where Shirley comes from. And, uh, uh, but it may have happened after you left. So Detroit, um, uh, Northern Ohio, uh, Chicago eventually, um, not Pittsburgh, uh, uh, Western New York, uh, a whole sort of the Iron Belt or Rust Belt, it, as okay. it's called, uh, except Pittsburgh does its own thing. Um, so uh, let's start out with the tan man thing. So you all said uh, that for some of you, um, what was it can? Can doesn't sound like black. And that's because in the East Coast, uh, places like, uh, well, Philadelphia and New York, but uh, generally in the East Coast, in the South as well, um, before a nasal, you get this raising effect. That means that the um, beginning of the vowel, can, ah, is of being down here uh, as open as it can get, ah, black cat starts off uh, maybe somewhere around red pepper, uh, tan, tan, and moves down or even back a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, or even, yeah, yeah. So um, there was a famous story, a linguist, linguist had a kid named Ian, and when he moved to uh, upstate New York, everybody laughed at him because they said, you've got a girl's name because Ian and Anne had the same, uh, wound up merging. So Ia and A, ah. so Anne, A. Ah. So it could, it could start all the way up here, yeah. But what it is is a moving vowel. And the, um, so it may wind up down here at A, ah, but if you try to grab the vowel, you know, tan, tan, te, 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 uh, you're grabbing it too high. Right, you're grabbing it higher than uh, the uh, where, where it winds up. So it's very different from our other moving vowels, which go up to ya or to uh -oh. wa. Right. Uh, that's that. Those are the the, the places that our other vowels um, like a or e or u or o wind up. So, uh, but here is a moving vowel as what's called an allophone of the black cat sound um, that winds up moving around. So uh, if you have this can uh, and it only happens before nasals, then you still have what's called a complementary distribution. You can still have it be part of the same group as all these other words that you said were black cat, like bad, naturally and cat okay so if it only happens before n then your brain uh says okay i can i can mush these together in the same category and save save a phoneme 
I don't, I don't have to have a new color, even though it technically doesn't sound the same as the, uh, the black cat sound, it can fit in here because it isn't anything else. And so that's, that was our argument uh, when Liz first brought this up, right, Karen? Well, it was, but, um, and, and if I could, for just a minute, could I, um, I want to take the screen or, or stop sharing yes. for just a second. Okay. And make sure folks that, you know, that we're all together on this. Um, remember that the chart is a map of this space in our mouth. So if I'm up close, you know, it's, it's from front to back. This is my tongue. And if my tongue is now translated into my arm and we know, can you, everybody make the, um, like say, um, uh, sing. Mm, 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 mm. Sing. And hold that last sound. Mm. Sing. If you're sing. doing that, where's your tongue blocking? It's way in the back, right? So it's way, if my tongue, if this is the, <laughs> forget this part. This is my tongue and this is my tongue on, no, this is my tongue. <laughs> and this is the anchor of my tongue in the back of my throat. Okay, here we are. So if I'm preparing for, mm, it's way up here, then I'm going to move my camera a little bit. So now I'm kind of up preparing. And if my arm were a little shorter, and it's not, but if my arm were a little shorter, it would be further from black. It kind of raised up, right? So now instead of, if I have to say um, thanks, which, you know, years ago, Shirley and I remembered this one day at our table, we were coding for a book and I found, I think it was thanks. And I was like, this is not a gray word. It's a mistake. And she said, no, it's not a mistake. It's, it's gray. Um, so is thanks, is it a gray word or is it a black word? That's, that's a different process. It's true. Uh, so the velar sounds that you're talking about, like egg and thanks, like before a g and, a, and an ang in particular, are also going to raise the back of the, back of the tongue. But I'm talking about the nasal sounds. So the nasal sounds are m, mm -hmm. n, and ang. And uh, they're in three different positions in the mouth, just uh, lips, m, and uh, tongue to the roof of the mouth, n, and then ang in the back of the mouth, like sing or sang. Okay. So uh, you're, you're, you're right that there's also raising happening in thanks and uh, egg and some other words that have velars in them. But, but that's, that's not because of the nasal. Man. It's not the same as tan and man. Interesting. Okay. So the, what happens, uh, the egg and uh, thanks uh, dialect is not the same dialect. It has can okay. man, although they could, they could overlap. Well, here's my question. And I got a little, pardon the, the uh, you know, the sidestep. But Shirley was aware, you know, we were aware that there was a different color. For you, Shirley, yeah. it was gray. And for me, it was black. With this tan man thing, you're, I think we were just finished saying that, that uh, tan and man become sort of allophones or, or variations on black. Right. My so, question is, why do some people notice it? Because my conversation yeah. last week with one of our participants led to her saying over and over, Karen, you're doing it. And I was saying tan and man. And she's like, you're doing it. It's, you're doing it right now. And I said, yeah, but I don't, I don't hear it. And I even, I wouldn't care. I don't know. So why am I not sensitive to, if I say tan man, it's still black to me. Why am I not sensitive to what this, this one participant is so sensitive to? Well, I can say that uh, one reason people c tend to be sensitive to that uh, uh, nasal raising, uh, the tan man rule, is that it's uh, stigmatized. So this is the, um, this is the uh, rule that is made fun of in um, TV shows like The Nanny, The mm -hmm. Nanny. So uh, she says, oh, yeah, that's really bad, bad. So she, she exaggerates the, uh, the um the raising because that that's funny that that's a funny accent and so i think that might be why it's salient for some people because say, oh I, I don't want to talk like her she's lower class you know or she's or, okay. or it's funny right so but that's, on, uh, but on the other counterpoint we have entire phonic systems that honor that sound as a separate sound of english and this yeah, is the, the, the wilson system uh allows for an and am as uh, what I call welded sounds. So uh, they had too much trouble teaching kids in Boston that a plus m equaled am, right? So they they have am and an as separate. Um, I guess uh, not separate phonemes, but separate combinations of of sounds. 
Okay. So they also do the same thing with Ng and and. So we're back. So we're back to this this issue of how Anne would sound like Ian. Right. Right. What for many of us would just be a black word and a a green word with a nice yeah. invisible Y suddenly sound like the same words. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so that uh, if if you are paying close attention, if you are phonologically aware, then suddenly this E yeah pops out at you as totally different from black. So if you're teaching these kids, uh, the, the Wilson system is for teaching uh, kids originally with dyslexia. Your microphone, Robin. <laughs> I have a question. No. Yeah. Okay. I want to raise, yeah, questions. Okay. So Karen, when you said, you know, you don't hear it, it reminded me of me hearing Karen using Auburn when she claimed she didn't have it. Yes. But yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're doing it. You're doing it. The same thing. You're using Auburn. She said, no, I'm not. I'm using Olive. And in fact, she didn't hear that she was using Olive, but I did. So is it Although this you're, uh, uh, those are different phonemes for you mm -hmm. and for me, but not for her. But what's interesting is that if you are, if you, if the tan man sound sticks out, does that mean they're a different phoneme for you? Or does that just mean that you're noticing a pronunciation that is different from uh, what you were what you're supposed to be identifying as a black cat if you're phonologically aware, right? Yeah. So, Liz, what I mean, happened when you when you first ran into this problem? Um, well, I I was always surprised that even like Judy Gilbert's clear speech, she lists you know words that you know can along with cat. Yeah, and I'm going. Wait, they're different sounds. When am I get finally going to meet some linguist that recognizes that they're different sounds? Yeah. And so what I did was I just I, I, the interesting thing to me was that I also met native non-native speakers who I was teaching, uh -huh. who recognized that too. But yeah. most of them didn't because Karen advised me just go with the flow, tell them it's black, and I was like, okay. And I did, and they were like, yeah, okay, it's black, good, I can hear that. But every once in a while, I would meet somebody who couldn't. So I took a little post-it, the same way I took a post-it and put it over Olive Sorry, Robin and Sean. I don't use it for, it's not part of my need to teach, but Tan Man was. So I drew, that, that's when I came up with Tan Man, drew a little picture of a man, and I just pasted, I just stuck it on top of, or next to the words black cat so that you know if people didn't recognize it fine but if they did it was there and i don't i don't care that much about the why's why it happens although it is sort of interesting but i just it's so weird to me that no like everyone else hears it as the same sound except for me and angela right angela <laughs> so what was great is here's the tan man i think it looked something <laughs> like that it was it was better it was, it was tan but, well, let, me um, tell you, let me tell you a story about one of my students. I have a, a student who's native speaker of Spanish, and she had a really hard time distinguishing between a black cat and olive sock, because in Spanish, you have a sound that's sort of halfway between the two, right? So uh, between cat and cot, say, or uh, uh, hat and hot. So, but I, I noticed that she actually uh, did that raising before N. So, so right. when she said can, she would actually say can, and so she pronounced it differently because to her, it sounded different enough that she didn't try to mush it in with whatever the Spanish vowel was, okay? And so, yeah, and it's a strategy I've heard other Spanish speakers use yeah. with each so other. So what, yeah. what I had her do, I, as I said, okay, when you're saying cat, pretend you're starting to say can, and then just at, uh, instead of the N, put it at T, so cat, and that's... Uh, that's actually the Chicago accent that I have. <laughs> so, uh, so it's it's an acceptable way to say any ash sound, uh, not just the ones before nasals. If you're a speaker of that dialect, which I can talk about. Great. Mm -hmm. Don has a question. Don, <laughs> oh. do any of you deal with the struggle between can, like a can of soup, and can, like I can do it? <laughs> yes. I see that more as Barbie and Ken. Yeah, that, that's a great one because um, I think that comes from uh, the uh, putting stress on 
an originally unstressed vowel. So if you if you stress a mustard, mm. what do you end up with? So instead of uh, thinking of the word I can do it, I can I can do it as I can do it. If you think, okay, I can do it, I can do it, then that's going to turn into some some other stressed vowel instead of the can of soup. So it's, so all, it's sort I, of a folk, like it's can, can, can. Yes, I think so. I, okay. I think I think that's that's a result of it being unstressed. What do you think, Liz? Liz. Um, I was going to say that for that reason, because it's it's a noun, but it also can be used as a, an auxiliary verb or whatever, and then that changes the pronunciation if it's unstressed, that you might want to use a different example on that chart you just showed us, like right. hand or, mm -hmm. or Santa or hamburger or, you know, like one of those instead of a word that could easily be pronounced can or can. can or can, yeah. So yeah. can or can, right. Can. Well, yeah, uh, like can man, those are good examples. <laughs> but I, I could I could use can't. Uh huh. How does can't work? Uh, Dawn, what is the pronunciation of can't? Is it can't or can't? Can't. With okay. with uh, with black cat with, uh, or yes. can man? Yeah. So, so like the way my students is, pronounce it, it's very confusing. Yeah. Because they, so they make it, them both it, sound the same. It would be can and can't then. And so can't has always been stressed because it's a negative. So can't always gets the stress. You can't unstress. I can't do it. It doesn't work. Uh, mm -hmm. But but I can do it. Used to have stress and then it moved. Yeah, Karen. To Jennifer. Yeah. Um, what I just want to say, I have another very different question. <laughs> I mean, we can go the whole hour on exactly. I can. No, welcome. Or, oh, but, oh, we can. I, I want to make I sure I have time for my question. <laughs> I like it. Yes, what, so. what's your question? So my question for the linguist is, um, and we mentioned this on the Facebook page, I was watching the Democratic National Convention, and it was the second night when um, the wife of the, uh, um, I, uh, the, president. the presidential candidate uh, was being introduced, and they were talking wow. about her a lot. And I noticed um, about halfway through the evening that I was having the hardest time hearing. And I thought, oh my God, I'm getting old. But every time they said Joe Biden, I was like, what? Are they talking about Joe Biden or Joe Biden? And I, or I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it, Joe Biden and Joe Biden, after a while, I was like, I don't know which one they're talking about. So talk about, if, can okay. you talk about who, that who phenomenon? Who's from, who's from Kentucky? Huh? Who, was it? who, who, who said they were from, uh, from, from near, near Cincinnati? Okay, so I had a student from Kentucky who had that L to O rule. And so um, Hill uh, and Hull wound up sounding the same. And I think uh, there, there are lots of other uh, dialects that have L gets uh, pronounced back far enough that it not only affects the vowel before it, but sometimes even even delete. So you could have um, well, the famous example is um, in, in England. Uh, Bristol is famous for this. Um, Bristol. Uh, Bristol, yeah. Bristol uh, has the L to O or L to W rule so uh, strongly that this is a hypercorrection. It used to be bris uh, sto sto meaning. Um, a city, so mm. a, a bridge stow. And uh, likewise, um, Ida and Norm, uh, um, if they have an unstressed uh, at the end, they assume it's an L. So idle and normal are the names of the, of the, of the two girls instead of Ida and normal, because it, it winds up being um, uh, reinterpreted. It's like, it's like we, we talked about um, your kids uh, inserting an L when they, for draw, if you, they had a vowel after it, they would say drawling. I'm drawling a picture mm. because the word draw and the word drawl were pronounced the same. Maybe, maybe they didn't even know the word drawl with an L. Mm. Yeah, but uh, uh, they would add the L in uh, in the same way that somebody from Boston might add an R, because Boston has an R drop drawing. dialect, drawing a drawing room. Right. So was it was that 
this confusion or melding of those yeah. Bill and Joe, was that me or was that the way that it was being pronounced by certain speakers? I would say it was probably their pronunciation. Uh, they were probably pronouncing Joel, Joel with a syllabic L, mm. Joel, yeah. and which would wind up sounding to you like Joel, Joel, Joel or possibly Joel being Biden. Joel, Joel, Joel and Joel. I mean, they don't sound very different to me either. It's going to be a really long four years if he gets elected. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I would, I, I'd, I'd be happy with that problem. Yeah, okay. I could deal so, with that. <laughs> right, so there's the perception and there's the production and where sometimes it's a little of both. Uh, yeah, so if, if, they're, if they're syllabifying the L or making it a very back L, um, I don't know if you have the front L dialect where Jill would be different from um, fall or something like that. Uh, uh, some people do, but... Um, but would we agree that even, I mean, apart from, well, not apart from, but common cool. across dialects, aren't we all dealing with a dark L problem there that we're... We're falling back. Not everybody has a dark L there. So some dialects have, um, after the front vowels, so after it, all the ones on the left of your uh, chart there, uh, green, silver, etc., they'll have a what's called a light L, like in French, so jill, right? Yeah. Or yellow, right? Oh, but uh, yeah. some dialects will have all of those, at anything at the end of a syllable, any L at the end of the syllable will be a so-called darker velar L. Mm -hmm. uh, velarization is when you um let's try make, it the, make, uh, uh i want to i want to do my bullwinkle imitation yes <laughs> uh so velarization is you you make the back of your mouth really big so so you talk like this hey rocky i'm a i'm a moose i'm bullwinkle the moose i can't do it exactly but it's when you talk like that and it sounds kind of stupid but that's the l that you've got here l o o so uh you, you're making the back of your mouth big um uh, but if you say uh, what's called a light L, uh, then you're making the uh, the tongue is higher. So, uh, 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 uh. when my daughter Lucy was little, uh, she could not say the dark L. It came out as a W. So she would say Lucy, Lucy. Uh, but uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, but she was also in the French immersion program. So she was, she could say her name in French, Lucy because that was a, uh, before a front vowel and French had a, a what was called a light L or a clear L. So she could say her name in French, but not in English. <laughs> so wow. Lucy, but woosie. Yeah. So I have a question, um, yeah. which is if we come into this room as we do on Fridays, fourth Fridays for Ask a Linguist, and we talk about all of these kinds of um, dialectal things, you know, regional things, um, how can we as teachers, what should we do with that information and that awareness with respect to teaching learners? Are we supposed to go and teach all of this to them, Robin? No, I, I would say no. Um, what, you told, uh, what you told Liz is what I would have said also, um, even, even though she found that some of her listeners did hear a difference. But um, what I do want you to be aware of, though, is that things that you don't Things, uh, things, dialectal differences that you are not aware of, your students may be able to hear, right? And so they'll say, no, I heard this. And, and instead of what you're saying, that, and you said, they sound the same to me. Like, didn't you t tell me you, you were interviewed by some Chinese network and they wanted to know right. if spin was with a P or a B or I, I, I don't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they collected questions from all over China to ask me and their top 10 questions included, um, how, what's the correct pronunciation of state, S-T-A-T-E, is it, is it state or is it state? And I, <laughs> you know, I, I sat there, I was there, I, I'll never forget, I was sitting in the radio station downtown and I was like, I, I don't understand your question. And she said yeah. state or state. And we finally got down and I thought she was talking about the final T and in the end it was a question of something that we just never would notice is how yeah, is it an unaspirated t or is it a is it a voiceless d you know right. is it a d or a t well yeah, it's probably a t a or state yeah but so. you know, phonemically we we uh think of it as a t because it doesn't make the s voiced in front of it for example it's not it's date but uh but that's really uh you know 
and it's reasonable for them to say, well, I perceive a D there because they don't, they might not have a distinction between an aspirated T and an aspirated T, or maybe they don't have the rule, uh, you know, uh, try pin and spin, you know, that rule that uh, in spin, the sound is different from in pin. You put, put your hand in front of your mouth and it's easier to, to, be, to yeah. feel that. So Angela, you try it. Pin, spin. Pin, now, spin. put your hand in front of your mouth. Pin, spin. Do you pin, feel a difference? Spin. So as yes. speakers of English, we don't hear the difference because it's an mm -hmm. automatic rule of English to aspirate the sound, to put a puff of air at the beginning of the word mm -hmm. and not have that puff of air uh, yeah. after an S. Spin. So yeah. when you're saying state, that does sound that you're saying could sound like a D. State. There's no, because uh, if you put that the, at the beginning of a word, you might have a hard time distinguishing between a D and an unaspirated T because T's don't do that at the beginning of a word. So it can't be a T, right? So it must be a D, even if it's voiceless. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but. Well, I think uh, it's, it's a little bit of, there's some sort of categorical imperatives, right? In the minute uh, you're trying to say green, but you don't move it, it sounds silver. For example. Right. Yeah. So it well, if it were green, then it would move, right? right. Yeah. Right. So, so it must be this... green because it doesn't move. Yeah. So yeah. That's exactly that's exactly what's going on. So you can be misinterpreted, even if you're saying it saying the sound perfectly according to the uh, the prescribed phonetics. But if you don't do all the other things that go along with it, like for example, lengthening a vowel uh, when it's stressed, even if you say that vowel perfectly, if you don't lengthen it, it might not sound like the right vowel or it might not sound stressed. It's a, so all of the, um, I guess all of the sub rules that go along with the pronunciation. And that, that's how you can uh, fool your brain or fool your listener's brain into thinking you're pronouncing it right. So in English, uh, you, most of you may know this, that uh, the difference between, um, oh, uh, how about, uh, pat and pad is length of, of the vowel. So pat is shorter than pad. And in fact, the vowel in English is longer before all voiced sounds or shortened before voiceless sounds, however you want to put it. But before a, a voiceless sound, it's short. And before a voice sound, it's long. So what if you're a speaker of a language that devoices final consonants, like German or Thai or something like that? Um, this happened to, um, I, 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 I encountered this, I was in line, I guess it was at AU, um, at the subway, um, and the person, uh, in line ahead of me said, um, I, I, uh, I like the, uh, seafood crap sandwich. And the, uh, the server said, beef and what? She was very offended. And it sounded like seafood crap. He was trying to order seafood and crab, but it came out seafood crap. And uh, what did he need to do in order to make her think he was saying crab instead of crap, he would have had to lengthen the vowel. So if you say crap, crap, then you're perceiving it as a B, even if you're saying it as a, a P, even if you're not voicing it. If the vowel is long enough, you can fool the listener into thinking that the sound after it is voiced. In other words, it's easier to teach a learner to spend more time on vowel than it is to get them to voice a final consonant that their brain- Well, if, if their language has a rule of devoicing, right. it's harder to undo rule. a rule you have automatically than it is to add something. Same with um, uh, a tense versus lax vowels in, uh, in Spanish. So if uh, we know that the difference between green T and silver pin is not uh, easy to detect or, pr or produce for a Spanish speaker, right? Uh, or for any, any language that doesn't distinguish those two levels. And same with uh, gray day and red dress and blue moon and wooden hook, right? Um, and a lot of people spend a lot of time 
trying to pinpoint exactly is it e or i e e e e e or e e e e e e but really that's not what cues the listener into whether it's green tea or silver pin instead it's the it's the movement so if i if i say um let's see yeah so if i say bitch bitch and i go from e down to like a schwa bitch the perception will be what 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 phoneme does that belong to silver silver pin just like ian was black cat right so bitch would be a silver pin if i say beach or beach if i start with i silver pin and go up to the y beach 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 what does the listener perceive what does the english listener perceive beach i'm going to the beach 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 i'm going beach. to the beach they, they perceive green tea and it's much easier to teach somebody to add a y after the i sound or to add a schwa after the e sound either way so as long as you're going in opposite directions it's much easier to do that than to ask them to pinpoint very very tiny difference in tongue height e it e it which is so easy for an english speaker to do uh but uh does not belong in the same phonemic system of other languages let me see if so, i can rephrase that so if they come down if they move down somehow they can get off of this train at silver and it'll count as a silver word yeah e itch. but if they're going upward what matters e is the fact that it's moving at all will cue it as the higher option, they yeah, yeah. So it, it a lot of it has to do with the direction that the uh, the movement is happening, and it, it's uh, I don't want to claim that silver is a moving vowel exactly, but it's a, a vowel that doesn't move up. So therefore, right. if it moves down, then you know it's definitely not a, a, a green tea word. Mm -hmm. So it, it's safe to say that all the vowels that we call moving vowels move up. And yes. then for students who have dis, uh, a problem distinguishing between that moving vowel and its neighbor non-moving vowel, mm -hmm. that moving downward is going to be a key for them. Ordinarily, yeah. That's why the tan man is such an interesting case because it's a moving vowel, but it doesn't move up. It doesn't, it, it moves down, it starts high. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's really unusual for, uh, for English, right? If you isn't, think that, it as a vowel. isn't that the way Old English used to, didn't? Old English had some, had, had diphthongs like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not unprecedented, but it's not a result of the, it's not a uh, retention of the old uh, diphthong. Right. Yeah, right. diphthong. Good, Robin, I'm gonna finish with a question also raised. If, and by the way, if anyone else has a question to raise, now. Oh, now has a question. Yeah, there we go. And uh, just a little word end. And um, um, when people, speaker, want to emphasize blah, 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 and, so I always hear and like that. So, it, and, so and, yeah. And. Oh, I think uh, all of native speaker, um speak like that also, even if i don't have the tan man dialect maybe if i yeah. stress it and 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 yeah so uh, and. Us, um I'll to have, my I'll, ears I'll, I'll yeah. my problem yeah. is that i come from uh chicago which has all of those so i would also say cat as oh. well as and so you know it's yeah. not a, it's not a good i'm not a good one to ask and yeah, I think I would use it because it's suddenly not really that word. It's a placeholder, which brings well, me to my next question about, uh -huh. yeah, this is going to be sort of the wrap up question before we do. Some. Yeah. So yeah. the same participant who was very concerned about tan and tan and man or tan and man or tan and man, because she insisted that I never say tan and man. And I guess I don't um, said, well, what about? Yeah, because yeah, doesn't have an N coming after it. There's that vowel sound again, Karen. And I thought, what an interesting question. And yeah, why uh, isn't it yan or something? Why, why, why don't you think there's a, there's a N 
in that even well, though I, kind of, I mean my, my argument or my my point up to that moment with her was it, it only happens before nasals it only happens before yeah. nasals so well, what about yeah there's no nasal yeah. there so what's the deal yeah 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 um one of the issues that we have with those vocabulary words is that they violate a whole lot of other uh rules of english as well so like uh-oh we've got waddle stops in the middle of the word that don't reflect an underlying t or anything it's the only place where we've got uh uh glottal stops uh it, as you know phonemic and likewise yeah or yeah or uh meh or, or something like that these all have uh the non-moving vowels the lax vowels uh ah or eh at the end of a word and that never happens in English. You can't do that. You can't say uh, bah. That's not a word in English. Uh, or bi. Or, but apparently um, you can. Yeah. Yeah, o o uh, only in that one, right? So uh, for exclamations or expletives, um, people usually say this is not really part of the English vocabulary. And you can do all kinds of weird things with these um, expletives that you can't do with ordinary vocabulary so there are lots of lots of mm-hmm i mean that's not a normal word either right so can we Even call these doesn't have a vowel can we call these spoken words that are not i mean we we do render them in writing but they're not written words how what would you well, call those i i don't have a problem with having words that are never written down because no, Many I just want to know what we are call never them. Written down, right? Do we call yeah. them spoken words? That's oh, well, they, they're it. called expletives. Yeah, they're and I, I have... Interjections. And they're not just interjections, because you could say, whoopee, and that's a word. Yeah. But, and I, I had this in, in like a touchstone book, which goes from a corpus, and, uh -huh. uh, and, and it had all these words in there. You know, uh, oh, and, you know, there's all these different meanings for uh-oh, and oh, and huh, and... You know, they're, they're used in a totally spoken way. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're, they're uh -huh. presented in the book, which is kind That's of interesting. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 Uh, Joan, you were going to say? Oh, I was just saying, I think they're called interjections. Uh, it could be. They're just uh, you like call little it words that you interject, right? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, but there are real words that are also interjections. Yeah. Like, well, get zooks. Well, there's, there's words like <laughs> the, the mm-hmm, uh, uh, like mm-hmm, and they, they explain yeah. it in the book like it's like, it means like I understand. Keep speaking. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's not a. It doesn't. It doesn't follow the pattern of an actual English word. It doesn't have. Yeah. You know, a vowel in it, for oh. example. Right. It's so kind it, of, it does yeah. weird things. Uh, Dawn, you had a question about the H and yeah. I think yeah, that's just a spelling. It's not yeah, right. Uh, it, so that part isn't uh, isn't spoken. But uh, if you spell it Y E A, it might be pronounced yay or I don't know something yeah. like that. So uh, th these are uh, words that don't follow the rules, and that's another rule that doesn't follow, right? And those so, rules are our deep rules. These are phonological rules, not prescriptive rules. Oh yeah, this, this, these are rules of, of the English language that have no relationship to, these are rules that nobody knows, right? Like the rule you can't begin a, a, a word with K-N. Well, you can in spelling, but you can't, you don't say no, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, don't pronounce the K before so it if, if a spoken word breaks a rule that we don't know about, is it breaking a rule? <laughs> no. It would be breaking a rule if you used it in a way that you would use a norm normal word. Like if I said, I don't know, the yeahs have it. I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe you could say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so this has been our first of it's been a while you know robin and i used to do a little webcast um called brain waves <laughs> and um it was it was all alone just the two of us you can imagine where that kind of stuff went but this is a lot more fun to be in a room with with all of you uh we will be doing this every fourth friday at five so if you if you tend to forget things <laughs> We've given you every little mnemonic or, or little bit of alliteration that can help you. Fourth Fridays <laughs> Friday at five. five. Um, oh, wait, it should be flinguist. That's right. Ask a flinguist on Friday <laughs> at five. Good. Um, so please come again. This has been recorded. We'll be uh, posting this over to our playlist in, in um, 
that place called YouTube. Uh, we will also send out a reminder in our community. A couple of heads up, uh, this coming week we start uh, a course that I think Doug has just registered for, which is our Refresh and Expand Colorval Basics course. So that's a nice uh, way if you've taken a workshop with us years ago and you kind of want to get back to the basics and know what else has happened since then in the methodology. Uh, that's going to be a, it's a recorded course. It's not a live course. And um, so we're, we're about to put that out for the first time. Robin, is it thundering there? Yes. Is it thundering where you are? Is it thundering where you are, Jennifer? I think the hurricane has arrived. We're starting to get uh, a few flickers Great. here. Yes. Um, yeah, and so as far as I think Don had a question here, the Eventbrite ticket for Fridays at five, is that your question? Um, this is the same link every week. We just have Eventbrite as a way for people to get into a, a formality of receiving a reminder. So once you've been to one and you keep the link, it's good for, for the rest of the semester. I just went back to my old email and, and clicked on it and it seemed to work. So Exactly, and we always put it up in the community as well. Okay. Don, you had another question? Well, I never did really see my ticket, but then I was posting on the Facebook group and I saw, oh, there's a link right here. Well, let me try that. So I can I find of, it. Yeah. And I think eventbrite find it there. confirmation sometimes get buried in spam. Um, yeah. so that's, that's a little difficult. Or you have to scroll all the way down to find the link. That's right. Uh, so go all the way to the bottom of the, of the confirmation and you'll eventually get to the link. Yeah. So we have Refresh and Expand this coming week. Uh, we also are starting a new round of ColorVal Basics Online. Susan Reynolds, you recently finished ColorVal Basics Online uh, today. How was that for you? And do you recommend it? I recommend it highly. This is a game changer for me. Oh, Just, awesome. <laughs> Yay. Hey, uh, write, write that quote down and, and put her in the uh, testimonials. We will. And Chelsea, Chelsea was the coach. Uh, so that, did you have a lot of fun listening to everybody and giving a feedback? Yes, it was wonderful. Wonderful. All righty. So that's a bit of what's coming up. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again on Friday at five, same bat time, same bat channel. And next <laughs> week, Skip bat. is going to be, I hear Skip, go ahead and give us a little hands up. Did you do it? Skip will be speaking on Dictoglass procedure, I believe. Skip, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Unmute. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dictogloss is kind of dictation in groups, basically. And people, people, it's it's good because you you have groups discussing what they wrote down and what the correct and incorrect, what their formulation, their idea mm -hmm. of the grammar uh, is of what they wrote down and the vocabulary words of of everything. Uh, so they work together in groups. I'm fascinated to, to find something. out about this. And it's, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. fascinated because yeah, how do you a, do it online? Program. Yeah, I, that's that's interesting. I'll have to yeah. come up with it. Yeah, but but really, because uh, it, it, it is a whole class activity, but it's divided up yeah. into groups. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, coming back and exploring it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I want to do that, but I, I was afraid to, with, I, I couldn't see how to do it remotely. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a it, it's interesting. I'll think I'll think of something. Maybe I already have. I'm very excited about this. Um, yeah. And Skip, you and I'll talk because I've got all kinds of great stuff from the past. Okay. How many of us are How many of us are aware of Dictogloss or I love Dictogloss. This is other oh. Ruth Weinrib stuff. Okay, this stuff is cool. It's very collaborative, and I think you're going to love it. So join us next week for Friday at five, if you can, and we'll see you soon. Okay, thank you for joining us. But wait, wait, wait! One more thing, wait, and look wait. for your newsletter next week. There we go. Oh, look for newsletter. your newsletter. So after the first of September, if you don't see it, look in your spam folder. Okay. I and I want to thank Dr. Barr. Thank you, Robin, for thank you. All Bring more questions. I love questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay dry, safe, healthy. Until next week okay. and beyond. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye.